you talk too much, um, and things don't come to pass, you can be criticized. So basically where I am now, I want to tell a story of, or present you, with you a, a vision. And this is a vision, uh, and I'm saying a vision in a, in a uh, I'm not using it literally, um, but it's, a, it's the impression that I get when I look at this culture, uh, this pre-dynastic culture, what happened to them? Where did they go? Uh, what do they look like? Um, and basically what we are left with is just the skeleton of a civilization. When we go to Egypt, we're looking at the, the bones or the skeleton of the civilization, the, the, the stones that were left behind. But what does the flesh look like? What is the spirit? What is the spirit? And that is more subtle. And you have to be very, very quiet. And you have to listen for that. And if you do listen, you can actually hear the frequencies of those temples, uh, as people will attest to. Teresa is here. She will attest to the fact that, yes, she heard those frequencies. Christine heard the frequencies. And they are ever-present. You can, the, the, whole, the whole country from, from Luxor down to Cairo with the temples and the Nile uh, resonates uh, at, at particular frequencies. And so the story I, or the story I, or the vision I would like to give you is, you know, if you just close your eyes and imagine the perfect environment for you. What, what is that perfect environment? And we really, we really pay homage to the elders uh, of the, the American Indians and the, and the Egyptians, the old, the old cultures with the, who passed down the oral tradition. And they have an attunement with nature, uh, with Mother Earth. They feel that connection with Mother Earth. And that is really a, a vision that, or a state of being that we want to be in, in that we feel connected, a connection with all that is, with our planet, with everybody on it, and even with other planets in the universe, that we feel that consciousness open up and we have that God consciousness, a connection. And really, when that happens, you don't need a temple, you don't need a priest, because you're already connected. As Stephen was saying earlier, you're already connected with, with God. And you don't need anybody to describe what the protocol is as far as getting to heaven. So... If you can imagine, though, uh, that that state of being could actually be accomplished by left-brain engineers, that's, a, that's inconceivable, isn't it? That um, you would have somebody who is totally, you know, left-brain, you've got to do this, this, and this, and through this, you're going to achieve this, and then this, and this, and this. But isn't that what happens when you get acoustic engineers design a concert hall? Um, and they design instruments, uh, they work with uh, science, they work with physics and uh, mathematics, and uh, they are def very clearly defined formulas and algorithms that go into creating wonderful technologies. But they're all kind of left brain, right? That makes it kind of difficult to survive in the left brain when you uh, get so much pleasure over in the right brain. So, but when, if you don't have the distinction or if both are open together and you, you live in both sides at the, at the same time, that is the state of being that I actually envision the ancient Egyptians in, is that they are actually open all the time to the universe and they achieve it with their technologies. They achieved it with their pyramids. Uh, and the temples, that their acoustic science and what they designed into their civilization actually created a culture where people were in a state of cosmic consciousness constantly because right now the, the energy of the sites is shut down. Um, and, but there are subtle hints. And it's by examining the, 
the, the, the sites, the pyramids themselves, that you're able to actually get a feel for what it was like. And sometimes you may even achieve it if you stay too long in that kafa or inside the king's chamber because that could really open you up. And I've, I've got to tell you, when I first started to write the Giza Power Plant, I poo-pooed all New Age theories about mystical experiences inside the Great Pyramid. <clears throat> because I, ju I thought, that, uh, well, I'm just not going to convince anybody uh, of the validity of any theory if I cannot actually prove it. Well, you know, some things really don't have to, you, you really can't prove, you have to experience. Um, and after several trips to Egypt and several experiences where, you know, I've had you know, odd things happen to me, um, I've, be I've become a believer that these energies that still exist um, were just the echoes of a civilization, uh, the population of which were master engineers, uh, musicians, and, and just very enlightened beings. But what happened? Now that's the, that's the key, and that is the cataclysm that Stephen was talking about, a cataclysmic event. And because of the nature of the technology that they were involved with, because what they were doing is they were driving the planet. They were driving the earth to harmony. They were attenuating the seismic activity or the seismic stresses in the earth's plates and relieving those energies, taking the energies through the pyramids. But they were doing it in a very holistic way. In other words, if you've been involved in a musical group or a chorus, you know that when you get a group together and you start singing, you can actually, you know, the, the synergy of, of a chorus or a, a musical group can, can build a tremendous amount of energy, uh, more, than, more than the sum total of the individual instruments or voices. So this is a phenomenon called nonlinear acoustics, where you have blending, blending uh, frequencies that actually combine to create uh, more energy. And that's one of the areas of study that is, is uh, going to be ongoing in, inside the Great Pyramid next year. But, um, but what happens, though, is you have a, a, a culture or a science that is drawing energy from the earth through the pyramids, through the temples, and relieving the stresses in the planet, and actually driving the planet to harmony. Now, what happens there is that the planet is in tune with other planets, such as Bella X, which uh, is, uh, vibrates at the frequency of an F-sharp. Funnily enough, the Great Pyramid, the King's Chamber, uh, has a, the chord, the F-sharp. It was discovered in 1995 by Tom Danley. Um, <clears throat> and the human brain. It resonates between at around six hertz. The frequencies in the king's chamber uh, resonate between two and nine hertz. So when you have all things are, are have a particular resonance, and by the nature of the physical material, uh, we have certain vibrations, and those vibrations um, actually are in harmony with all matter in some form or another. Now, if you throw in a lot of other frequencies, you could actually cancel out a lot, uh, some of those frequencies, and so you become fairly dead, uh, not, not, not as vibrant. But if you, are, if you do have energies that are, are in harmony with, with you, then you're upbeat and you're, you do become uh, in harmony with, with your environment. And so you can actually create a synthetic environment where the human body uh, responds to the frequencies in, in ways that are very beneficial, such as opening up the brain, you know, affecting the hippocampus in the brain, and, uh, and really achieving a, a state of nirvana without having to pass out of the body. The, and really, in a situation like that, if you have a population who are affected like that, um, 
who needs anything else? Because we're all striving for something, right? We're, there's all, there's, there seems to be a, a, a certain amount of disquiet in everybody that we're all yearning, 